And this is the spirit of ecstasy coming into you on this beautiful evening. Nice and warm in Texas. I trust you all are having a, a great and wonderful and marvelous time and are extremely ecstatic on this Friday evening. I certainly am. Well, after all, of course, I'm the spirit of ecstasy, so I'm always ecstatic. I'm always having a good time and always joyful. It's a great day, a great evening, uh, and everything's wonderful. And uh, I want to uh, explain to you uh, how to continue in this spirit of ecstasy and how to avoid the other spirit of depression and oppression and despondency and preponderancy and all of those things like that. The preponderance of negative thoughts. We should know and realize that goodness and good and beautiful things are all encompassing. They're all around us. They form a circle around us. They form a, uh, uh, within our being, they're welling up on the inside of us. Goodness is everywhere to be found. Uh, in Acts 17, 28, it says, God, uh, it says, in him we live and move and have our being. God is within us, God is without us, goodness is within us, and goodness is without us. It's all encompassing and in every place but our awareness. Now, if goodness is in every place besides our awareness, maybe if we lift our awareness, we could get goodness uh, to begin to manifest itself in uh, all the things which we desire. And uh, like we had, uh, I had read the story a while ago about John D. Rockefeller, and how he uh, uh, made uh, a million dollars by the time he was 30 years old, 35 years old, something like that. And by the time he was 43, he was the richest man in the world, uh, containing what would be today uh, several hundred million dollars. And that was the richest at that time. He would be equal to uh, having even more than Bill Gates as far as uh, being the richest man in the world would be. Uh, in a sense, equal to having more money than Bill Gates does today. Uh, so, uh, but he, uh, <clears throat> by the age of 43, he could not just digest his food very well and had to eat special food. And he would go along in a, uh, in a train, in a special train, and look out and see the uh, uh, railroad workers, the railroad hands, uh, out there eating their uh, salt pork, and he said, uh, oh, I wish that I could turn back time, and I would rather be out there eating that salt pork and enjoying that than having all the millions of dollars which I have. And so we need to realize that we uh, want to be wealthy, and we want to have prosperity and abundance, but there's a way to get that prosperity and abundance without destroying our physical body if we turn to the infant mind which is in us and let him do the work. Uh, the Bible says in the Old Testament, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. If we will stand still in our meditation times and uh, let the Lord speak to us and then write that down in our journals, he will give us the ideas to make for success and money and how to control it in a way in which we will not have all of that worry and fretting. We won't have all of that, uh, like John, for instance, John D. Rockefeller uh, had uh, become uh, a rather uh, overriding taskmaster toward uh, the people underneath him and uh, became a rather mean uh, and cruel person in a sense and uh, would actually uh, destroy people that got in his way and all these kinds of things. Uh, because that was the idea which was planted in his mind about how to uh, maintain that money, to make the money in the first place and then maintain it, taking over smarter, smaller companies and things like that. But if we will realize that those type of things uh, do not have to take place, but rather we can do things in a divine way, expressing the divine love of God, 
We can do them in a patient and understanding way. We can do them in a way that will not hurt our physical body uh, any. And we can actually, uh, we can actually, in fact, do them in a way which will actually make us healthier and stronger. And we can live to a ripe old age of 100 or more and uh, have all that money to enjoy all that time if we'll only do it in the right way. There's a way to do it, uh, to uh, earn it, like a book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. He tells uh, methods in there about how to consistently and methodically make uh, uh, lots of money. You don't try to necessarily make it overnight, You try to, but you try to you let uh, infinite mind within you give you ideas as to a long-term plan, and you set that plan into into in the focus and in your mind, and you set that you you draw out the steps, whether it's ten steps, a hundred steps, and begin to take step one, step two. You work toward that plan, make your plan, and work your plan until you uh, uh, amass the wealth that you need. And uh, you do that in a patient and understanding way. And everyone that works for you, you love them and appreciate them and take care of them and make sure all of their health packages and all of their incentives and all of their uh, retirement packages and everything are all in order and all the various other things which we uh, need to do uh, when we're running companies and uh, taking care of uh, our businesses. And uh, we do that in, uh, if we'll do that according to the principles of Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich, we'll not have to suffer illness in our body from uh, uh, the way we operate our, our business. But getting this goodness within us, or getting uh, understanding this goodness which is within us that it is uh, all encircling and all within closer than our very breath to us and in every place but our awareness why do we not experience more goodness day to day why do we not experience all the prosperity we can hold uh, because we know that the omnipresence of joy and goodness is there it's all around us it's within us we are actually pitched within and without with goodness pitched in with and without with with love and uh, the love of god uh, surrounds us and protects us the angels encamp about us psalms 91 the angels of the lord encamp about them that love him god comes to us Every second and every split second and every nanosecond with trillions of ideas as to how to be successful and prosperous. He speaks his word of prosperity and abundance uh, to us out into the universe. We so we see in John 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And God spoke the word, and the, and the worlds were formed. God spoke the word, and the universe was formed. God speaks the word of abundance uh, continually every nanosecond. How long do you think it takes him to speak the whole universe into existence? He can do it in a nanosecond. He can speak all manner of prosperity into our lives in a nanosecond. And it is coming out of the mouth of God. It's coming out of, out of the mouth of God every split second, every nanosecond. But we are not being receptive to it. Uh, every, uh, it's been uh, uh, trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of years God uh, has always been, and God will always be. And all those trillions of years, God is speaking worlds and more worlds and the next worlds and, and another universe and another universe and another universe. He's speaking another uh, idea of prosperity and another idea of abundance and another idea of health, another idea of goodness, another idea of joy, every split second, another one, another one, another one. But we do not tune our frequency and our vibration into it. That's why we uh, have books on uh, called, uh, such as the one called "Getting Into the Vortex" by uh, Jerry and uh, uh, by Esther and Jerry Hicks, and the Abraham Hicks books, and uh, Ernest Holmes' uh, "Science of the Mind," and all trying to get us to uh, raise our uh, awareness and our frequency to realize uh, what all is there, uh, to uh, to get that vortex going, to get ourselves into the vortex. Uh, the vortex is simply in the place. Uh, to receive the cornucopia, cornucopia of abundance. It's uh, the cornucopia of abundance is being thrown at us uh, at uh, much higher pressure than the atmosphere. pressure. It's been thrown at us continually, second by second. But we have to get ourselves, we have to get our scoop open. We have to get the, uh, 
uh, the cornucopia of our uh, awareness open to receive those things. That's a level of our acceptance. The level of our acceptance becomes the law of, of uh, law of abundance. The level of our acceptance becomes the law of attraction. It's all the level of acceptance. It's the degree in which we uh, form our level of acceptance, which is the degree of our persuasion and our knowing. Uh, we begin to get ourselves out of the way as far as wishing and hoping and just accept. Accept all the gifts of God. But what keeps us from doing that? Uh, because the, uh, there's other things out there that are testifying. See, uh, all these things testify. Goodness is always testifying to its goodness. Abundance is always out there just hollering and screaming, I'm abundance, I'm ready to come to you. Uh, but there's all these other things that they're testifying. Uh, lack, uh, fear, uh, depression, despondency, uh, the testimony of sickness is everywhere about us also trying to get us to listen. It's trying to get us to put our hands to our ears and listen for the sickness ideas. Uh, the ideas uh, that we can't do it, uh, the ideas that we are low on energy, uh, they are, uh, they want us to cup our ears and listen to their ideas. Uh, these, they're testifying. And so it depends upon whose testimony we want to receive. It depends on what testimony we're going to allow our ears to hear. We have to learn to close our ears to the testimony of sickness and disease and lack and uh, uh uh, low abundance, low health, uh, uh, fear, uh, despondency, depression. Uh, we close our, our ears to those things. Uh, no longer are we tuned into them. We change our frequency. We make the major shift. Uh, uh, there's a whole lot of talk about, about uh, uh, making a, a shift, a, a paradigm shift these days. Uh, uh, shift, sh shift shaping. S-H-I-F-T, shaping, and uh, shaping uh, our, uh, what our uh, world will be like, uh, uh, shaping what it, the uh, surroundings in our, of our environment will be like, shaping what, uh, how much abundance will surround us, shaping how much abundance we will enjoy, shaping how our health will turn out, uh, shaping uh, how uh, we will overcome all disease, uh, the shift shaping. We, sh we change uh, what we are shaping in our lives by changing our thought patterns. We change what's becoming, what's forming in our lives and the shape that we're forming just like a, a, a person a changing, a, taking a block of, a, of stone and, and uh, forming a, a, a statue out of it. They, they work upon it with the right tools in the right way to shape it into what they want. We have to shape our prosperity and our abundance by thinking only good thoughts and only productive thoughts and by doing this we uh, crowd out all this other false testimony we crowd out the lack of goodness we crowd out the lack of abundance because we spend so much time thinking about abundance that uh, there's no room or time left in our lives for anything else uh, any other thought to come to us we can't think lack. We can't think sickness and illness. We can't think these things because our minds are already full. We take we, we, we take that cornucopia of goodness and prosperity and health and uh, wonderful things uh, and the goodness of God and we pour that in our mind uh, and, uh, and, and overflow, just pour it to overflowing, let it run all over and all through us and, uh, and fill ourselves to the brim Clear, clear up to the top to where there's no room left for negative thinking. No room left. It's impossible to become depressed. Impossible to become bored or unhappy because we're full of all these prosperity ideas and, and, and the good thoughts of God coming to us because we take time uh, in our lives to meditate upon uh, these principles. We uh, read good books. We meditate upon the principles of God. Uh, trillions and trillions of good principles of God. Uh, trillions of good principles of cosmic consciousness coming to us all the time. And we must um, spend our, our lives, uh, we must spend the time that we have meditating upon those rather than upon negative thoughts of sickness, illness, depression, and despondency.